Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton News Daily. Uh, Jean Philippe Gabamon, who is back in training, he's been running. Um, according to Michael Silver yesterday in his press conference, said he's been he has been running, has been urged to move his position by his agent. His agent has said it's time for him to pick centre back as his position because he thinks he'll be a sixty million euro player if he chooses that position. Uh, he said it, it's his own fault be, for being so good in different positions that he's ended up being a centre midfielder. Uh, but he feels that centre defence is his best position. The player before coming to Everton have played right back, centre midfield and centre back. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons obviously Everton looked at him as well was the option that they could play him at centre back. They obviously he started the season uh, getting an injury not long after the game um, against Wofford. Um, and obviously, so we're, we, we are without him for the time being, maybe another three, four weeks till we get him in the squad. Um, I'm not sure Marco Silva would agree with, with Gabamon's agents. He sees him obviously in a three in midfield. Uh, there's been talk he would like to see him alongside Fabian Delph and Andre Gomez. But it's certainly an option. And with Everton lacking some pace back there at the moment, um, would that be... Would that be a role that he could fill if Everton needed them to? I mean, certainly, if you were looking to bring in a player, I think there'd be more options for a centre-back. Certainly, the possibility of Zuma coming in, maybe not in January, but maybe next summer, he looks like he's not going to make it at Chelsea. Let's get it right. And uh, Silva was asked about it yesterday and just sort of smiled and said, you know, it's too early to talk about those things. But it doesn't feel like to me that the manager wants him. He's already he's already been left out of the side a few times. And he seems to be the player that would easily be able to come in and play centre-back for Everton. So, um, yeah, let's just get Kabam and fit. Let's get him in the side and let's get him in the centre field first. And then maybe we can talk about uh, what his best position is um, after he's played the running games in the Premier League. Uh, Michael Silver has said that Everton need stability. He said he un understands the frustrations of the fans. He said, but Everton needs stability in this time. And it's up to him and his team to convince the fans that this run of losses is just a blip. And, uh, you know, Everton are actually a good side. He said, you know, that's what Everton need. And he said he understands the frustrations of the fans because that's based on mostly emotion. He said, but at this time, Everton need a little bit of stability. And it's whether, I suppose, as a fan, you believe it's a blip or not. And I suppose tomorrow will go a long way. Um, one way or another of 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 convincing the fans, isn't it? You know, win tomorrow and the table will look a lot better going into that international break. But a defeat, four game, four defeats in a row, uh, five in the last six games is not going to look good for the manager. Um, but you know, I think someone pointed out that Everton have got the second youngest squad in the Premier League, and I suppose you've got to take that into account. But um, as fans, all fans, me included, we do let our emotions rule our head. Let certainly let our heart rule our head. So, um, but I can certainly see where the manager's coming from. He's trying to build something. He had, he is without players, and as he said, it is up to him to convince fans that this is just a blip. And obviously, a win tomorrow would go a long way to doing that. And uh, Michael Silver has also been speaking about Anthony Gordon and said he's really, really close to the first team. Um. He said one of the reasons, obviously, one of the things stopping him is that we've seemed to have a lot of players in that in the position he plays in, and I think he's referring sort of to the front three positions as where you know we Everton certainly see Anthony Gordon. You know, David Unsworth was asked this question. He said Anthony Gordon sees himself as a number ten, but he sees him more as a number nine because he's got unbelievable pace and he can score goals and he's got tricks. So he sees him more as a number more as a number nine. So. Um, Will we see the emergency of Anthony Gordon this season? You know, maybe possibly on the bench against Wofford in the League Cup game if he keeps playing well. You know, we've done a, we've done a video this week with Paddy Boylan from the Athletic, and we spoke about that. He's watched, um, he's watched Anthony Gordon. He did a little piece on Anthony Gordon and went down and watched him for the under 19s and uh, spoke to the under 19s manager, and you know he's watched him numerous times for the under 23s, and he thinks he's he thinks he's got that that ability to become the one that breaks into the first team. Obviously still lacking physically a little bit, but given a chance, it'd, be, it'd just be nice to see him given a chance and see what would happen if he got that first team chance. But, you know, you can fully understand 
fully understand the manager's issue with that with having Richarlison and Bernard, uh, Awobi, uh, Tom Davis already on the bench, Dominic Calvin Loon and Moise Keane. But Everton's big problem is scoring goals and could having a kid like Anthony Gordon sitting on the bench get Everton fans excited and think, well, you know what, if he comes on, we wanted to see something a little bit different. That's what young, exciting players give you. It's like when you sign a new player, all you want to do, you just want to see them play because it's something new, it's something fresh, it's something different from the things that you're used to. So um, it doesn't seem like he's that far away. He does train with the first team. So he, he obviously is showing in those first team training sessions that he's got something about him and he's capable of uh, coming into the first team, hopefully in the next 12 months. So um, we'll have to wait and see. Another young striker, Fraser Hornby, has been speaking about his loan move to Belgium team KVK. I won't attempt to pronounce their full name, but KVK. And he said it was the um, intervention of a teammate that... Uh, convinced them to make the move. He said he spoke to Yannick Balassi after Balassi had been on loan at Anderlecht last season about the uh, Jupiter League, the Belgium League. Um, and Yannick Balassi told them that the league is a lot more competitive than he probably um, thought it was. And he said that's what convinced them to move. He said last season there was opportunities to move, but Everton didn't give him the green light. This summer they have, and he's gone away to get some experience whether he comes back with that experience and develops more into Everton's first team I'm not so sure but obviously the, the lad is playing first team football now he scored his first goal last week and that's that's really good for him if you listen to this week's podcast we've done a we've done a, a big section on Everton's under 23s and that bottleneck that's been created with development not breaking into the first team not going on loan what you do with them so uh check out that it's a really 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 good listen if you're on uh, Patreon, the video is there for that as well. So make sure you check that out. Really fascinating listen, listening to Andy, uh, the piv, um, <laughs> who breaks it all down and talks about where we may have gone wrong in the development of some of our players. And finally, Michael Keane has been speaking about his partnership with Yeri Mina and saying that Yeri Mina's English is developing day by day. So he's not quite a scouser yet, but he said he's getting better at understanding, he's getting better at communicating what he wants and, and understanding what Michael Keane wants and he said that's that'll take that partnership forward obviously the last few weeks hasn't been great and we've been shipping in a few goals but um, Marco Silva stressed before the season that with Charleston and Yerimina and some other players had to get learn better English which I think is slightly ironic but uh, he said they've got to strive to get the language barrier uh, break their language barrier down and obviously for two centre halves that are playing together and are going to play together for most of the season, you imagine you would imagine that communication is so important. So, um, unless Michael Keane, you know, goes and um, learns a bit of Spanish and a bit of Portuguese, then you know it's up to Yeri me to get that to get that down. So, let's hope he does. He's got plenty of time, and I'm sure he's an intelligent lad, and we'll, and we'll sort that language barrier you know. out. There you go. This has been the Everton News Daily. Hopefully tomorrow. Um, we'll have some reaction videos. Some well, we'll have reaction videos. But let's hope we have some happy reaction videos um, as Everton visit Turf Moor to face Burnley. Uh, make sure you check them out. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, if you want more videos, join us over on Patreon. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.